If you saw this car parked on a distant Scottish Loch Beach, you might mistake it for the previous generation Land Rover Defender. But it's not. This is the Ineos Grenadier. The way this car came about is quite interesting. Saddened by the departure of the Land Rover Defender, Ineos approached Land Rover and asked for permission to keep building the Defender and any tooling they may have left over. And Land Rover, they said, well, they said no. But Ineos carried on nonetheless, and this is the car they've produced. Now, after only a short time in this vehicle, I'm learning it is infinitely more advanced than the Defender that it kind of replaces. And also, I'm thinking, the Defender's probably not the car I should be comparing it with. Of course, given the origins of this car and how it came about, it would be impossible to spend any time in it without at least thinking about the Defender for a short while. But trust me, it is only a short while because it only takes seconds in the Ineos Grenadier to realise just how advanced and far ahead this car is. For a start, this driving position. Now the Defender, bless it, I loved it. I was raised in southwest rural Britain and I have many fond memories spending time in a Defender with a collie on the seat and hay bale in the back. But the driving position was far from comfortable. Commercial at best. But this is fantastic. First of all, I'm sat on a Recaro seat. These seats were developed in conjunction with Recaro and Ineos and they are beautifully supportive, almost a little bit sporty actually. The driving position itself, it's a little bit upright, but generally speaking, really ergonomic. Visibility of my surroundings is excellent. The seat you can raise up nice and high for when you're doing off-road. So that's a big tick over the Defender. And then you just start looking around the cabin at the levels of technology. And trust me, any thoughts of an old, outdated Land Rover are gone, permanently. For a start, I've got this main central digital screen. Now inside that is a huge amount of technology related to off-road modes, driving modes. You've got all of the systems you could require if you're gonna be spending time on road or off-road. Interestingly, that system wasn't borrowed from anyone else. It was developed in-house by Ineos, so it's completely unique to this car. I'm expecting to see it in plenty of other models from Ineos because that is a serious commitment of time and resources. Now, a little bit like a Tesla, I have no head-up display or central cluster ahead of the driver, just a little panel for some warning lights. Everything else is in that central screen in the middle of the car. And when you start to look around the rest of the vehicle, then there's some other highlights that really stand this car out from not just the Defender, but pretty much everything else. One of my favorites is the Attitude screen, which tells you all of your roll angles and the pitch and steering angle. Actually, quite a lot more helpful, I was expecting, in a car that has so many turns lock to lock. Then if I go through into the next screen, I've got all of my tire temperature and gearbox oil temperature information. Perhaps not quite so critical when it's uh, about eight degrees outside, but hey, you know, on hotter days and working this thing hard, perhaps towing. Worth mentioning that this car has the industry standard three and a half ton towing capacity with brake trailer. And then there's the Pathfinder application. Now that allows a few different navigation options, not just following a map, but it allows you to track where you've been. So if you're fully middle of nowhere, then you've got options to basically follow a trail of breadcrumbs back where you've been. And if you want a more conventional road book to just follow instructions and directions, a uh, more traditional navigation system or uh, orienteering almost system, then you've got that option too. Oh, a lovely silky BMW six cylinder. I don't know how they've got it to sound so good in this car, but it actually does. In the statistics screen, you've got all of the stuff an absolute tech geek would love. And it'll get, even give you a grid reference of where you are in the planet, so your longitude and latitude. And finally, the fifth and final screen is the electrical screen that gives you all of your charging and battery information. Perhaps not so important or interesting in a vehicle that's absolutely standard like this one, but when you start adding auxiliary electrics, winches, big lights, it does become a little bit more important. 
In the center console and extending up into the panel above the center console, there is an amazing array of switch gear and dials and hardware. Now, initially when I jumped in this car, I thought that was gonna be a bit of style over substance, but the more time I spend in the Grandier, the more I realize that is amazingly functional and every switch has its place and purpose. Down here, I've got all the major functions for the radio, the audio system, the climate control, and a couple other bits and pieces. As this is the Fieldmaster, I get a few more comfort and luxury touches, like heated seats, for example. But when you start looking up here at this kind of Boeing 737 style panel, there's a ton of other equipment and it's all really nicely positioned to be easy accessed. All my off-road modes, the headlights, the locking diffs, of which there are two, plus the center diff that's lockable. I've got all the major auxiliary switches back here. And if you option uh, with a little extra back here, you get a whole row of four high load switches for all the major components you might add, like a winch or beefy lighting. Um, every switch up here has a purpose. And I love these little aluminium bars either side to stop you bumping them by accident or if you're on off-road circuits it stabilizes your hand so you don't actually knock the switch or control it properly. One of my other favorite features about this interior, even though it's actually really well appointed and quite luxurious, dare I say it, it's completely hose out just like a Wrangler. Even all these lovely switches that have been specifically designed for the Ineos. The quality of the interior is also really surprising as well. Now, it wouldn't be the first time for a fledgling startup car company to release a product to market and it have some serious shortcomings in build quality. But actually, I've spent two days in this car now, off and on road, and there isn't a single squeak or rattle from its interior. The fit out is amazing. The quality of materials is surprisingly good. This car gets a straight 10 for build quality. And everywhere you look, there are some really lovely features. Once again, not just design sort of follies to get a wow factor, but practical as well. One of my favorite, because this is the Fieldmaster, it gets the Safari window, which opens like a bus window in the roof, but then you can pop it out completely. So for two individual sunroofs either side. That just boosts the feeling of space and airiness in this cabin, which it didn't really need already, but is an absolute bonus. Over the time I've spent with this car, I've had the opportunity to put it through its paces on some really challenging off-road courses right through the central highlands of Scotland. And it has done nothing but surprise me through and through. This car was clearly designed to spend a serious amount of time off-road and acting as a workhorse, whatever you throw at it. And I was prepared to forgive it an awful lot for its on-road manner, given what it can do off-road. But you know what? I actually don't have to at all. The real surprise with the Grenadier is when you get it back on the hard top and just start doing some cruising. This is a twin live axle car, just like the Jeep Wrangler and the previous Defender, but it absolutely does not ride like one. That's partly thanks to coil springs all round, but clearly the Ineos engineering team have put a huge amount of trouble into making sure this car rides properly once you're back on the road, and it is absolutely staggering. Yes, it feels a little bit like a live axle car from time to time, but generally speaking, it's absolutely one of the best efforts I've ever driven. The steering is decidedly 4x4-esque, and I actually tested it earlier today. It's three and three quarter turns lock to lock, so the ratio is extremely low. You'll thank it for it when you're off-road, but when you're back on road, it does take a little bit of work to make around some of the tighter corners. But of course, it's one of those things that you get used to very quickly indeed. And the NVH levels in here are absolutely brilliant. Bear in mind this car is running on all-terrain tires, which have proven themselves off-road quite nicely, and yet, on the open road, there is nowhere near the amount of roar or hiss I was expecting from those tyres when they contact asphalt. Now in Australia, there will be a number of options. There will be an entry-level Grenadier, which will cost about ninety-seven dollars or $98,000, depending on whether you go for the three-seater or the five-seater. And there are a couple of specification options. There's the Trial Master or the Field Master, depending on whether you want a more lifestyle-focused vehicle or a more hardcore off-roader. Nicely though, they both cost about $110,000. There's also a choice of two different engines, both by powerhouse BMW. There's a three litre straight six petrol turbo or a three litre straight six diesel turbo. 
both mated to an excellent eight-speed Z-Off automatic. There's no manual for the time being and no plans to introduce one I hear, but it doesn't really matter because that is such a brilliant combination of eight-speed auto and one of the best six-cylinder engines in the market. And once again, no change of price depending on whether you go for a different specification version or the petrol or the diesel. That's just about keeping all the level of this car rationalized and straightforward. There's nothing confusing about its pricing and when you wander into an Ineos showroom. Ineos was so determined to get the ride quality of this car spot on, whether you're on or off road, it actually developed six different spring rates for it and they can be swapped in or out depending on whether you have a high spec version or an entry level version or a petrol or a diesel. And the other thing I love about this model is pretty much everything is available. Yes, you can start with the entry level version or if there's a specification package that really suits you like the Field Master or the Trial Master, then one of those is available too. But virtually all of the features within those specification levels is optional. So you can have, for example, an entry level version with the Safari window. You can have roof rails and roof steps to virtually everything. And the range of accessories for this car is really admirable as well. This car is packed full of off-road centric equipment. Obviously, it's four-wheel drive. That's a pretty good start. But you'll notice down here, I have what looks like a very traditional high and low range lever. Now, that is exactly what it looks like. Mechanically connected straight into the transfer box. And that also allows you to lock the center diff as well. All directly mechanical. Then up here, I have two switches, which are for the front and rear locking differentials. I've got an off-road mode. I've got a wading mode, which does a couple of different clever things. And if I hit off-road and go into my central lovely touchscreen system here, I can find all manner of electronic assistance systems to help me when the going gets tough. Now I'm in the petrol version at the moment, and I was initially thinking that the diesel with its 550 newton meters of torque would be the absolute pick, but actually the petrol has still 440 newton meters of torque and over 210 kilowatts, and it hustles this 2.7 ton beast along quite admirably. The decision between whether to go petrol or diesel would be way harder than I was expecting. Both are beautifully smooth, both manage to be reasonably efficient, and those torque characteristics lend themselves to pretty much whatever you're gonna do with this car. Performance is way better than I was expecting for a big 2.7 ton all-wheel drive go-anywhere machine. And once you're used to correcting a little bit with that low ratio steering system, you can carry pace comfortably and quite relaxingly along long Scottish Highland roads like this for hour after hour. Ineos is about 25 years old as a chemicals industry company, but it's obviously very new to cars. And when you're that fledgling in a relatively established industry, you have to borrow bits and pieces from others. Now obviously they've gone to BMW for the drivetrain in this car, but honestly, there's not a lot else to show that this is a very new car company. All of these switches look absolutely unique to the brand. The seats, totally unique. There's not really any evidence to suggest that they had to ask for help in virtually any area. And once again, I keep coming back to the same thing. There was a lot I was prepared to forgive this car for, and I just haven't had to all along. I arrived in sunny Scotland with fairly high expectations for this car and how it would go off-road. And I'm very pleased to say that all those expectations have been absolutely well-founded and completely met. But its on-road ability has really staggered me. It's smooth and refined and pretty much way better than anything that rides on a similar suspension and chassis system. The quality of the interior has really shone as well and the level of technology that's packed in has been way above my expectations. Which brings me back to the start. You may jump in this car and straight away start thinking about the car it effectively picks up the baton from, the Land Rover Defender but very quickly your mind goes to some completely different rivals like the Jeep Wrangler and Mercedes G-Class. And now after several days in it, I've moved on again. This car doesn't just compete with those hardcore established off-roaders. It has a level of refinement in technology and value for that matter that goes way beyond. 
probably about this point nearing the end of my time with Ineos Grenadier in Scotland that this is the first time I have returned to the British Isles in about 17 years during the winter. And I have to say that one of the things that has made it infinitely more palatable is this car, the Ineos Grenadier. Mm -hmm. 